Hey everyone, it is TK Friday, and today I am doing an image that I've entitled Rocky Refuge. This is going to be another full edit with PDF notes and image download. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday, my favorite day of the week, and I hope it is yours too. Today I'm doing an image by AZ. I'm entitling this one Rocky Refuge. Again, it's going to be a full edit, so don't forget to download the image and the PDF notes. You'll find links for that in the description below this video. You have to click more to open up that description. Hey, and if you have an image you'd like me to edit on a TK Friday, scroll down to the bottom of the description and you'll find a contact me. Contact me and we could talk about editing one of your images on a TK Friday. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Now I'm starting out here as always in Lightroom. Now this is what the image looks like right out of AZ's camera. But then after I do my basic adjustments on it, it looks like this now. As you can see, I did crop this image. I'm going to click on the crop tool. There's my crop right there. So you can see I did crop it. And I basically click on auto. And again, I used a linear profile for AZ's camera, which was a Nikon Z7 II, I believe. Also adjusted the temperature a little bit, warmed it up just a little bit to the right. So I adjusted temperature. And then I made sure that my shadows and highlights weren't clipping because if you clip those shadows and highlights you'll lose detail in the lightest lights and the darkest darks and we don't want that so i had to adjust my white and black point here and that's basically it other than typical a uh, little bit of sharpening here a little bit of color noise reduction no luminance noise reduction and then always under lens corrections I check on remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile corrections, because in Lightroom, I just basically want to get the image pretty flat because I'm saving the major heavy lifting work for Photoshop and the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. And then at this point, I would just right click on the image, go to edit in, edit in Photoshop 2024. Now, when you download your image, it will look just like this. It'll be at this state with the crop and my basic adjustments. This image from AZ is a landscape image and we have land and sky. So we can save out a sky channel as well as a foreground channel. And I call this setting up for success because we'll be using those channels later on here. And to do that, it's really simple on the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Hold your command key down on a Mac, control key on a PC. Just hold it down and click on the sky selection button. And when you do that, you save out a sky selection as a channel, which is really nice. Hold that command or control key down again and double click on the sky selection button. And now you're gonna save out a foreground selection. So that is pretty darn cool. And now we move on to step two. And I wanna give a shout out to Peter Ellum who gave me this idea to speed up this balance and contrast workflow at the beginning of my edit. Thank you for this, Peter. This really helps. But what we're gonna do first is click on the luminosity mask button. We're going to click on Midtones 3, and I'm only using that to protect me from clipping my darkest shadows and my lightest highlights. That's all it's really there for. We're going to output that to a color grading tool. So let's click on the color grading tool button. And then what we want to do is duplicate this layer. And we could do that simply with the TK9 combo or CX panel by clicking this button. We duplicate it, and now we're going to make the first layer active the first color grading layer that is active right here i want to start out with doing a balance and contrast of the foreground and then we'll move to the sky but here's what we're going to do next now we're moving to step three if you're following the notes we're going to click on the mass calculator button but before you do that hold your command or control key down when you do that this is a really handy little tip 
it will keep your mass calculator from shutting. You can always close the mass calculator by clicking the X button, okay? So that's nice. It's a nice little tip. I love TK9. There's so many great innovations here. If you're enjoying TK9, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Hey, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps my channel to grow. So whenever you do that, I really appreciate it. And also when you leave comments. All we have to do next is click on foreground because I want to intersect it with this mask. And you see this X right here? That stands for intersect. So click that. And as you can see, there's my foreground intersected with that Midtones 3 mask. And now we can come to the color grading tool. And let's start with shadows. I'm going to click on the shadow button because now we want to build some contrast in here and balance. So what we'll do is I want to take the shadow slider and drag it to the left to darken up the shadows. Now you don't see anything change on this slider until you release your left click of your mouse. And I'm gonna take this over to a minus 30. And now we're gonna click on midtones and we'll work on the midtones. And now I wanna open up the midtones. We'll move this to the right and just stop whenever you like it, okay? And in my case, I went to plus 41 and I like that. And now we're gonna to go to highlights. So we'll click on the highlight button and I'm going to drag this to the right over to 50. And it'll just pop some highlights out. Now let's take a look. Here is before the color grading adjustment and here's after. So already off to a good start. Now let's move into the sky. Now our mass calculator is still open, but now we have to make the top color grading layer active. So let's just click on that layer. And now we're going to click on sky. Very simple, right? And the mask is already saved down here in channels. And we'll just click X for intersect. And now we have that Midtones 3 up in the sky. That sounds like a great name for a song, Midtones 3 up in the sky. I just want to say this about the color grading tool. Not only can you color grade with it, but as you noticed on the foreground, I only used it to adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you can adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights as well as color grade. And that's what this color wheel is for here. And I'll do a little color grading in the sky, but we're going to start out with, I'll just use midtones and highlights. So let me click on midtones and we'll do that first. What I want to do is darken up the midtones. So I'm just going to take this midtone slider and drag it to the left over to right there, minus 17. And now I just want to give that sky a little bit more blue. So I'm just going to hover my cursor like right here. And then I'll left click with my mouse and see I add a little bit of extra blue to the sky. So there's some color grading. And you can click anywhere in this color wheel. If I want a green sky, I can turn it green. You know, maybe I'm on another planet somewhere. And now for the highlights. So I'll click on the highlight button. And I want to open up the highlights. And I'm going to go over to plus 26. And I like it. Now here's before sky balance and contrast. And here is after. And don't forget we have our overall before and after button. Now right now the uh, combo panel is covered up by the mask calculator. Remember I told you to close it. All you need to do is click X. So let me go ahead and click X and close it. And now we have our before after button right here in the combo panel. Now here's my CX panel. You'll find all these buttons here, but I have my actions open up in the CX panel. So let's see. Here's the overall before and the after. So pretty good so far, right? I love this first balance and contrast. It really gets the image going in the right direction. And now I just study it and look for issues. As I study the image, I'm feeling that the midtones could lighten up just a little wee bit. And I have a really quick and easy way to do that. Right now I have a color grading tool in my way of the multi mass panel. So click the X and nothing changes here. But what we're going to do is Click on the luminosity mask button and a really good way of lightening up midtones in a subtle way is click one of the three midtone buttons. This is midtones one. This is midtones two. Notice how they get lighter as I go, but they're all midtones adjustments. But I use midtones one. I'll put it to a curves adjustment layer. It could be levels. It could be brightness, contrast. Because all I'll use the adjustment layer for is a blend mode. So I'm going to use curves. So I'll click on the curves button and that'll give us a curves adjustment layer and then all we'll do is change the blend mode to screen and when I do see how it lightens up the midtones now that's too light if you hover to the left of the percentage amount you can left click and drag to the right or left to adjust opacity I'm going to take it back to 50 percent but if you once you get close to 50 hold your option key down and that'll make this go in increments of one at a time 
to help you really hone that in and get that stopped right at 50 right there. So check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. Just a little gentle lifting up of the uh, mid-tones. Okay, then I'm continuing to study the image. And these foreground rocks are too light drawing my attention because I want you to go more back into this rock here and these rocks, but mainly this rock. So I'm trying to get my viewer to look where I want them to look. So what I'll do is select this area. And an easy way to do it is the great object selection tool. So click on your object selection tool. Now I have mine right now in rectangle mode. And what I can do is just come right out to the right hand side here and drag a marquee right around this area here and see what it does. Does it pick that all up? It misses this little area right here. So you can just get your lasso tool type L hold your shift key down and just lasso around that area. And that will include that in the selection. Now, what can we do with this selection? Okay, I wanna darken these rocks up so we can come up here to the multi-mass panel and click on this button, the My Channels button, and we could choose Active Selection. We're gonna use the Mass Calculator. Don't be afraid of the Mass Calculator. It can be your very best friend. So click on Active Selection. Now click on the Mass Calculator button. And now I wanna intersect a mask inside of this selection. So click X for intersect. And now we need to choose a mask and actually we need to create a mask. And I've experimented with luminosity and zone masks and I found the zone mask gave me the best selection. So I'm gonna click on the zone mask button and I'm gonna sample one of the lighter areas in the rocks like right here. See, and that's that color right there. Click okay. And now we can see there's our selection. Now, all I'm going to do is lighten it up. This is a brightness slider. I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit to maybe somewhere right around there. And this is a tighten slider. It'll tighten the selection up. I don't need to tighten this one up. It's actually fine because some of these tones I do wanna darken down too. So I'll leave it just the way it is. And now all we need to do is click equal, you know, to make the calculation. And check it out, so beautifully we have this area selected, right, with that zone mask that I created right there. And now I think I'll stay with the theme of color grading tool. Now you could use a brightness, contrast adjustment, a curves adjustment, but I'll use a color grading tool adjustment. Not that I'll do any color grading on it, but I can work with shadows, midtones, and highlights. It is a curves adjustment layer, but it just is a little bit more intuitive, and I love the color grading tool. It's so versatile, as you can see. Now, I do want to darken this. I'm going to start out with mid-tone, so I'll click on the mid-tone button, and I'll just drag this slider to the left and stop when I think I got it dark enough, and I think right here at minus 25. And now let's go with shadows, and I'll drag this to the left, and I think I'm going to go right here. Okay, so check it out. Here is the before. And here is the after. Now you also have this opacity that you could pull back if you want a little too strong, whatever. There's all kind of ways we could adjust. We have opacity, we can come back and adjust the brightness sliders here of the different tones that we use. I'm not gonna touch the highlights here because it's mainly just mid-tones and a little bit of shadow in there. Now again, if I shut this off, see how your eye wants to go right here? But now notice when I turn it on, you're gonna go further back into the image and mainly at this rock here, so check it out. I'm gonna turn this on and darken that. But you see that, how that's pushing us back into here? And again, when it's light, our eye is drawn here. But when I darken it up, now we're going further back in the image. And to me, this is all part of the joy of editing, being able to handcraft your image and make it look the way you wanna present it. But remember, you have that artistic license. You can present this image any way that you want. My job is to help you get the full use out of the TK9 plugin for Photoshop and Photoshop because they work hand in hand. All right, next up, I'm going to do something I haven't. I don't know if I've done this before in this channel, and that is a nice mid-tone contrast boost. This is really cool. To do that, now right now my color grading tool is in the way. I'll X out of it. Nothing will change in the color grading tool. Go back to the luminosity mask button and click it. And now remember I want midtones. So here's midtones one. This will be too subtle. Here's midtones two. It's a little bit lighter. It'll be a little more aggressive. Here's midtones three. That's too aggressive. I'm going to use midtones to output it to a curves adjustment layer. And then I want to put an S curve on here to increase contrast. So I'm going to click like right around here and I'm going to go up to 
like right there. And then on the shadow side of things, I'm going to go right about here. So I have a nice S curve here. Now check it out. This is just a mid-tone contrast boost. Let me shut this layer off by clicking this eye. So there's before and here is after. Now, after the contrast adjustment, it's a little bit light in here, but I can correct that with some blend if. And all we need to do is come to this button on the multi mask panel. This is for edit blend if. So click on here. What I did was I experimented with no lights one. I clicked that and I didn't see much of a change, but then I went to no lights two. And then I saw more of a change. Now see right here where it says grade the checkbox. Look right in this area. I'm going to shut this off. Okay, see how that got lighter, and now when I turn it back on, notice, see how it gets a little bit darker. So that really helps that out. So Blend If is really a great addition to the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. And if you're enjoying Blend If in uh, the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, let me know in the comments section below. Okay, next up, you see this light area here in the rocks, like here and here and here. I do like this light area, but I'd like to tone that down a little bit. It's drawing my eye too much, so we can fix that. What we can do is, let me X out of Blend Diff. Nothing will change with the Blend Diff. Just click the X, and now we can see our multi-mask panel. I'm going to get a zone mask. So I'm going to click on the zone mask button here, and what I want to do is create a zone mask. So I'm going to pick like a light area in here, like right there, and click OK. And now what I want to do is just tighten that area up a little bit with this Tighten slider. I'm going to drag it into the left a little bit, see how that tightens that up. And now I want to lighten that up a little bit by taking this Brightness slider and dragging it over to right about here. And now I'm just going to burn this area, so I'm going to use a burn tool. Now the burn tool has two sides. The left side gives you a 50% gray layer. The right side gives you a transparent pixel layer. I'm just going to use the left side. You can use either side that you want. And now with my brush, which will be a black brush, and I want to use an opacity of like 20%. So right now you'll notice I'm at 10%. Type your 2 key, that's the shortcut, for 20%. And I just want to paint across here over all these light rocky areas. And the zone mask is helping me. Now, if I lift my brush and paint again, it'll get a little darker. So I can darken up certain areas. But try to stay on the light areas the best you can. Because that mask will blend out into other areas too. So you got to be careful. Get this once here. And this rock right here is a little too light. And some of these rocks, I'm just going to tone these guys down. And this little rock up in here, I want to tone down too. Maybe get this guy again. One more time back there. And over here and here one more time. So check it out. Here is the before. See how that just tones those guys down a little bit. We know they're there, but they're not grabbing our attention as much. The next thing I want to do in this landscaped image is close off the sky. In other words, give a little bit of darkening to the top of the sky. And also on the foreground down here, just to close it off a little bit. And to do that, one of my favorite ways is getting a curves adjustment layer and using multiply blend mode. But right now I have a selection, so that's not good because I had that selection to paint on here. Remember, that was that zone mask selection, so I need to deselect it. So I'll click this button to deselect it. Because if I didn't do that and I clicked on the Curves Adjustment Layer button, it would have added that selection into the mask, which would have not have been what I wanted. So this way I just get a plain white reveal all mask. And now what I want to do is turn this into a hide all mask. And we could click this button on the combo panel to do that. Because now I want to use a multiply blend mode. And I can get that on my combo panel right here by clicking this button right here for multiply. And now we don't see a change here because I have this black hide all mask on here. And now I'm going to use a gradient tool. So click on this button right here for your gradient. And make sure you have it on linear gradient. That's this button right here. And then this is a drop down. If you click right here and open up your basics group, if it's closed, you can just click this triangle here and make sure you have it on this first one, which is uh, black to white. And then make sure you have it set for reverse. That's important. Make sure reverse is checked on. So you want the white on the left and the black on the right. See, if I click reverse, it'll be the opposite, black on the left and white on the right. But you want it in reverse so click reverse make sure you have that and then just right outside of your canvas click and start to drag down and you see how that gets darkened now if you hold your shift key down as you're doing this you can constrain this you see that to go straight for you so i'm going to take it down to maybe right about here 
And then we have this diamond right here. We can adjust this. It's kind of like a window blind is the way I like to explain it. You can see that. It's the graduation point. So I just want a little bit of a close off here. Something, something right about there. Now, that's way too strong. So I'm going to take this opacity. And I want to pull this back to like 50% right there. So let's check it out. Here's the before. And here is the after. See, it just darkens it up right there. If you don't want to see this line, you could click this icon for the curves adjustment. So here's the before and here's the after. But I have an issue because it's going over this rock here, which doesn't look natural, but we can take care of that. One other thing I failed to tell you about the gradient. See the gradient right here, the drop down? If you click this, there's two types of gradients. There's a classic gradient. That's the old style Photoshop gradient and then the new gradient. This is the one I'm using. So make sure you have gradient checked on, not classic gradient. I just wanted to point that out. And now let's take care of this issue where we're making this uh, rocky area too dark. So what we can do here is click on our mask calculator button on our combo or CX panel. And we can do one of two things. We could click on sky and then click intersect or you could click on foreground and then click subtract to subtract the foreground. They'll both do the same thing. There's just different ways of doing it. So in this case, let's, uh, on my notes, I have sky and I intersected. On the video, I'll do foreground and subtract. And you notice, if we look at the mask right now, I'm gonna click the double arrow button. You can see that the foreground has been subtracted out and it is not getting the gradient. So that's pretty nice, wouldn't you say? Pretty neat. Now, if we click this button again, we're gonna go back to the image. And again, if we don't want to see this line, we can click right here. And now let's check it out. Here is the before and here's the after, but now this is protected. But I'm not quite done because you see these clouds up in here, they're getting a little too dark, but we can use Blend If again to help us here. On this layer, let's click the Edit Blend If button. And what I did here was clicked on No Lights 2. So when I click that, we don't see much happening here. But then I started to think, what would happen if I took this slider and started to drag it over to the left? Well, let's check it out. Let's see what happens. See how this area is getting lighter? And as I kept dragging, it got lighter and lighter. But it's still closing this off, because check it out. Here is my before, and here's my after. But it's protecting this really light cloud right here. And also, you can see if you click this double arrow right here, you can see a magenta overlay. So notice when I drag this over. So we can see exactly what's going on here. You see that? See, I I'll click No Lights 2 again. And that's the adjustment. And again, I'm taking the slider and I'm dragging it over. But once I get over to here, you can see how it's lightening that up. But as you can clearly see, well, I just drug that tool out of there. I didn't want to do that. But as you can clearly see, it is darkened off up there. That's the magenta. That's the area that is getting dark right there. So I'm going to shut off the overlay by clicking this button again. So check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. And I like that darkening right there. If I wanted it darker, I could increase this opacity. But now let's move on to the closing off of the foreground. I'm going to click the X to get rid of the blend if nothing changes. And now what we'll do, we'll do that same thing. We're going to go and grab a curves adjustment layer, put a black mask on it by clicking this button, clicking the multiply blend mode button. That changes to a multiply blend mode. We don't see a change because we have a black hide all mask on here. And now with that gradient tool, make sure you're using the new gradient and make sure you're using linear gradient and make sure you have basics and you're using this one right here and make sure you have reverse turned on. And now at the bottom here, right out here, I'm gonna click and drag. And this time, I'm gonna leave a little bit of an angle here to kind of go with the angle of this land. Maybe something right about there. And then we can take this diamond and we can adjust this however we would like it. And I think right around there, but that's way too dark. So let's go ahead with the opacity and start to pull this back. And what I'll do is I'll take this the whole way off and then just build it up slowly and stop whenever I think it's good. And I'm gonna say right about here, somewhere around 46. But then we could go and get some blend if again and protect our darkest darks. And what we can do is come and click on the edit blend if button again. And this time I'm going to use 
no dark swan. So let's click that. And you see how that is protecting those darkest darks, right like that. And now we could click on this icon so we don't see that line. Now we could see here is the before and here's the after. See how that just closes that off and I like it. And next what I like to do is bring out some detail in all these different rocky areas here. And to do that, I'll use the camera raw filter. And so what I need to do is stamp all these layers together. And we have a button right here on the combo panel. We can click it and that will stamp all our layers together. And then I want to turn this into a smart object in case I have to go back and do some readjustments. So what I'll do is click this button to convert this into a smart object. And now we'll click ACR, which will take us into Adobe Camera Raw. Now in here, I'm going to use the effects section right here. So if yours isn't open, just click on effects. And what I want to do is work with texture, clarity, and dehaze. So what we'll do is take the texture and we'll start to drag it to the right. And I'm going to take mine over to like a plus 30. And now on clarity, I'm going to drag it to the right and give us a little bit of clarity in here. And I think right there at 40. See all that nice clarity and texture that's popping up? And how about a little bit of dehaze? This will give you a little bit of contrast. And I think right there at plus 15. And now we can click OK. Now this, this is a smart object. We can always come back here and readjust if we need to. And that's why I like to use a smart object. So we'll click OK to accept this. And now this is applying it to the entire image. But let's get a look and see what it looks like just on the rocks and even in the water here. But I really only want it on the rocks. So what I'm going to do is go to the mass calculator just so I can evaluate this. Click on foreground and click apply. And you can see now it's only on the rocks and in the water here. But you know what? As I look at this, I would like less detail on this area right here. A little bit more detail here, but the most detail on this rock back here, because this is a rock I really want you to go to. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and put this into a group, a black group that hides everything. So here's the group button. It has two sides. The left side gives you a black layer mask. The right side gives you a white reveal all mask. I want the left side, so I'll click this. It puts this into a group with a black hide all mask. Now, I'll grab my object selection tool, and I'm going to change this from rectangle to lasso. And what I want to do is lasso around this whole rocky area right in here and see what kind of selection we get here. And that looks really good. Now what I'm going to do is come to the combo panel or the CX, whichever you're using, and click this button right here for fill. And I want to fill this, see where it says contents. If I click the drop down, I'm going to fill this with 50% gray and click OK. And see how that gets that detail at 50%. And what else I want is this rock here, like right around here. Let me see if I can grab this, see if it gets it. Yeah, that got that. Maybe this rocky area right in here. So I'm going to hold my shift key down and see if I can add this into the selection. And yeah, that gets that OK. And maybe I'll hold the shift key down again and just get these rocks right up in here. Let me see if it'll grab these guys. Yeah, and it grabs them okay. I think it's going to be okay. And now what I'm going to do is come back here and click on this fill button. And again, use 50% gray, click OK. And now they have 50% of that detail. Now I can deselect by clicking this button here. So far, let's take a look. Here's my before and here's my after. So I have detail, 50% of detail here, here, and here. This area back here on this rock, I want to go like 80%. And so what I'll do is drag around it. Let me see if I can just grab this rock right here. Yes, and I've got that rock. Now I'm going to click this same button again. And I don't want 50% gray this time. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to click on color. I'm not going to use color here, but you see this circle right here. And I want you to look at this number right here, 20% under B, hue, saturation, and brightness. What I'm going to do is just drag this. I'm going to keep it to the left here, but I want to drag it till that goes to 80%. That B goes to 80%, which is right here. And click OK. And now I'll click OK and fill that with 80% of the detail. And now let's uncheck this and take a look. Here's my before and here's my after. 
And now, if you recall, when I got this section before, when I darkened it down, I used the rectangle mode here. So I'm going to go back to rectangle and I'm just going to click and drag and see if I can select that again. And it missed this again. So I'll type L to get my lasso tool, hold my shift key down to add that to the selection. And now we're going to fill that by clicking the fill button. I'll click here where it says color. And this time I want 30%. I'll highlight 80 and just type in 30 for 30% and I can click OK. And now that's going to get 30% after I click OK here on Fill. And now that's getting 30%. Now let me go ahead and deselect by clicking this button right here. And now I have 30% of detail on these foreground rocks. I have 50% on this rock and these rocks over here. And I have 80% back on this rock. So that detail, I'm using the detail to pull you back to this rock. In other words, it's not quite as detailed. It's a little more detailed here, and it's really detailed here. So check it out. Here's my before, and here is my after. Now, here's a little trick. We can get rid of this group. All you need to do is hover over the group, either the left or the right. It doesn't matter. Hold your command or control key down and click right here. And what it'll do, it'll get rid of the group and just put that mask right there, which is exactly what I want. Again, here is the before and here is the after. Take a look at this horizon area. I think it's a little too light. And this is where I'm paying attention to detail where I think I just want to darken it up a bit. Now, right now I have edit blend if here. I'm just going to click X to get rid of it so I can see the multi mask panel. Nothing changes on any edit blend if layer. And what I'm going to do is click on the luminosity mask button. And I need to find this light area. So this is lights one by default. Here's lights two. Here's lights three. And here's lights four. And I think lights four targets that area pretty well. And then I like to go through the different color channels. Like here's red. Here's green. I like how green is picking up more. And I tried the others, but just to save some time, green is the one. But try them all and just come back to the one you like. So I'm using green. I'm going to output this to a curves adjustment layer, and then I'll just click the multiply blend mode button and check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. See how it just darkens it up a bit and that's good. This rock's a little bit too light grabbing my attention. So what I want to do is darken it up a bit. I'm going to use a color grading tool again. So I'm going to grab a luminosity mask and I'm going to use a mid-tones three, just like I do for balance and contrast. Output it to a color grading tool. Then I want to grab the object selection tool. Now I'm in the lasso mode and what I want to do is just lasso really quickly around this rock like so and see if I can grab the whole thing. And yes, I got it. And now I use a mass calculator. So click on the mass calculator button. We're going to load the active selection. And then we're just going to intersect it with that mask by clicking this X. And there's that rock right there. Now I can deselect the selection so we don't see it by clicking this button right here. And then all I want to do is click on my midtone button and just darken up the midtones a little bit to like a minus 10 right there. And also with the shadows, I'm going to slightly darken those shadows. I'm going to go to a minus 10 again, right like that. So here's the before and here's the after. See, it, the emphasis is just not on that rock and it's pulling us more to this rock. I feel these rocks are a little too light, so I can go back to that layer, this color grading layer. Let's click on it. And what I want to do is go to midtones, click on the midtones, and you can see it's at a minus 25. All I want to do is darken it up a little bit more to like a minus 42, minus 43 right there, and that helps. And I just have a couple more adjustments and we're done. Thanks for bearing with me. I know this is a little longer tutorial, but there's a lot of good information here. I just want to work on the foreground color, stay away from the blues. And right now I'm on this color grading layer. So let's go and make the top layer active because I want my next layer to start above here. Right now I have a color grading tool here, so we're going to X out of it. I'm looking for lower saturated color. So I'm going to use a saturation vibrance mask and I'm going to click on vibrance one, go through the different vibrances. There's two, Vibrance 3, and Vibrance 4. Generally, it will be Vibrance 4. So here's Vibrance 4. I'm going to output that to a Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer. I'm not going to work on blue, but right now it's on Master. This is a drop-down. I'll click on it. We'll start out with reds. And I want to increase the red saturation to 25. Then we're going to go to yellows. I want to increase the yellow saturation to 51. Now we're going to go to green, and I'll increase that a little bit to 44 and now we're going to go to cyan i'm going to stay away from blue i'll increase cyan 
82. And now we're going to go back, click the drop down, go to master, and I'll increase that a little bit to plus 15. Now here is the before and here's the after, but that just balances out the color a little bit better and I like it. One final step and we'll be done. I just want to add a basic vignette. If your TK actions aren't open, click your TK button, but click the vignette action button. A Gaussian blur comes up and I just click OK for the radius. It always works out for me. And there it is here, but follow closely because I'm going to do something a little bit different. First off, I always like to click the edit blend if button and in this case, I'm going to use a no darks one to keep it off the really dark darks. I'm just going to X out of the edit blend if nothing changes here. I think it's a little bit too strong, so I'm going to pull the opacity back to how about 20%. I don't want it in the sky. The sky's getting a little too dark. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. I'm going to keep it out of the sky, so here's what I'll do. Click on the mass calculator button, and then we want to click on the sky and subtract the sky. And you see how that subtracts it out? Now check it out. Here is the before and here's the after. So it's only going on this area right in here. So that's pretty nice. You know what? I think my midtones need to lighten up a little bit. So what I'm going to do, and this will be the last adjustment, I promise you. Click on the luminosity mask button. Click on midtones one. Output to a curves adjustment layer. And what blend mode will I use? What do you think? If you said screen, you're right. Click on screen. That's just a little too bright. I think I'll just ease off on this a little bit to maybe somewhere, you know, right about here at 70. So here's the before and here's the after. Let's check the overall before and after. So we're going to click this button right here on the combo or CX panel. There's where we started and we end up here. I know this was a longer tutorial, but please give this a try and work through those PDF notes. I think you'll learn a lot. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. I hope you enjoyed today's edit. Please give this edit a try. Don't forget, download the notes as well as the image. Thanks, AZ, for the use of your image. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.